Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. Today I will be demonstrating how to make a portable monitor from an old laptop. This video is a part of a larger video that I have previously published titled Projects for Old and or Broken Laptops. If you want to see more laptop projects, please feel free to watch the full video. If the laptop screen is still functional, it is possible to make a standalone monitor out of it, and there are several ways I can go about this. The easiest and most expensive one being ordering a complete kit, which is basically a monitor without the screen. All I need to do in that scenario is to remove the screen bezel, check the model of the screen, look for a compatible kit, order it, and install the screen in it. But for this project I plan to be a bit more creative. I'm planning to not only keep the screen within its original case, but also to use its hinges as adjustable legs. Unfortunately, there is no going around buying a control board, also known as a driver board, and the real challenge here will be how to secure it on the monitor. The purpose of the driver board is to provide an interface between the screen and the outside world or external devices. You see, this is what the interface of the screen looks like, and it cannot be used directly to power the screen or to provide it with video input. That's where the control board comes in. On one end, it has a compatible interface with the screen, and on the other, depending on the model, it can have various HDMI, VGA, USB, and all other connector types. Not only that, but it also comes with a power connector, so that the monitor can have an independent power supply. And that's not even the end of it. A control board can also have buttons to adjust the monitor settings, a possibility to connect speakers, and even a remote control, turning an old laptop screen into a functional television set. This control board is compatible with this screen, and I found it by typing the screen model, followed by the words control board, in my internet search engine. In principle, all I need for a functional monitor is this screen, the control board, and a 12 volt direct current power supply. But I want to make something more sophisticated, which is why I'm going to use some more parts from the laptop, and I have even ordered additional components. My plan is to make a portable monitor with an internal rechargeable power supply. Here are the parts that I will be using. One LP173WD1 screen with the metal frame and hinges still attached. One LP173WD1 compatible control board the four remaining lithium-ion cells from the old laptop battery, a case to house the four lithium-ion cells, one lithium-ion cell charger, this one is specifically designed to charge four lithium-ion cells connected in series, one adjustable step-up, step-down, direct current to direct current converter, and cables. Here you can see how I'm about to connect the components. Please feel free to pause the video so that you can take a good look. Now, it is well worth mentioning that due to its DIY nature and lithium-ion cells removed from an old laptop battery, this device will be a potential hazard, so I will have to use extra caution while constructing it, as well as while operating it. As you have probably already noticed, there are two extra components on the picture. These are a lithium-ion battery capacity indicator and a push switch. Both of these components are optional. The battery capacity indicator, as the name suggests, reveals the capacity of the batteries, while the push switch makes sure that the indicator is illuminated only when the switch is pressed. The reason why I reconsidered adding these components was that they would add complexity and weight to the final device without adding any real value. So despite having them, I have decided to leave them out of the final device. Before moving on, however, I would like to add that the lithium-ion battery capacity indicator needs a tiny setting adjustment before it can be used. As you can see on the back of this component, there are 8 setting options. The battery indicator can show the capacity of up to 8 lithium-ion cells connected in series, but it needs to know exactly how many cells it is connected to. The way to let the indicator know the exact number of cells is by soldering together two adjacent pads after a number corresponding to the number of lithium-ion cells connected in series. In my case, that number would be 4. Now, back to connecting the components together.
the step up, step down DC to DC converter can be adjusted via this little screw. The control board needs a 12 volt power supply, so I need to make sure that the output of the converter is 12 volts. Let's test if everything is working as expected. Alright, so it seems that the electronics are functioning as intended, but I'm far from finished. All this needs to come together in the form of a robust portable device, but as you can see, almost none of these components can fit inside the screen case together with the screen. So I need to make a hole in the screen case for the cables and attach the components on the outside. Of course, I'm not just going to leave them exposed, that would make the device vulnerable and dangerous, so I am going to cover the components with the lid that I removed from the bottom of the laptop earlier. In order to keep everything together, I will be using hex standoffs, screws, and some double-sided foam tape. But first I need to mark and make the necessary holes. I'm using a hand drill for hair precision. I also had to cut out holes in the foil on the back side of the screen case, on the same spots where I made holes with the drill. These holes need to be significantly bigger than the drill holes, and their purpose is to prevent a short circuit. As you can see, the foil is conductive, and so are the metal screws and standoffs that I'm using to secure the circuitry. So, if I don't prevent these parts from touching, there is a real danger of the monitor bursting into flames. The foil of the laptop lid needs to be removed for the same reason. And now, it is time for assembly.
The bottom bits of the hinges are too small to act as stable feet, which is why I'm using two of these flat connectors to make bigger feet. They are 8 cm in length, 1.5 cm in width, and they are made out of stainless steel. In order to secure the connectors, I'm using two of these M4 16mm round head screws and two M4 self-locking nuts. When secured, the flat connectors will be able to rotate in order to make the monitor more compact during transportation. Alright, time to test the final device. I made a mistake by placing the control board so low, making it difficult to plug an HDMI cable, but the electronics should work. So this was all for today, thank you for watching, if you have enjoyed the video please consider giving it a thumbs up and if you like this type of content please consider subscribing to the channel so that you may be informed when a new video becomes available.